Hello everyone, this is Joe with Joe Talks, and today we are going to go over a solar powered battery backup system that you can build to use for reserve power in your home in the event of a uh, power outage. So, uh, the system I'm going to show you right here is a 5 kilowatt hour system, and uh, if you think about how much you can power with 5 kilowatt hours, you know, we designed this thing to run. Uh, a deep freeze, a refrigerator, and then be able to run a uh, air fryer or something like that if you needed to cook some food or whatever. So, um, so this is the system I've got right here. Um, I'll go through it real quick. It's uh, the battery storage is 400 amp hour batteries, and all of this stuff that I've got on this board right here, uh, I sourced off of Amazon. And so I'm going to put links in the description below if you want to buy any of this stuff. Um, but before I get too deep into this, I just want to make sure everyone knows that I'm not a licensed electrician. And uh, I'm really doing this video just for a demonstration purpose and to uh, just for educational and entertainment purposes. So if you are not uh, real good with electronics or electricity, I would highly recommend that you hire a professional electrician if you decide that you want to build something like this. So just as an FYI. Um, so let's start going over the system. So uh, I've got two leads right here that uh, I don't have hooked up to solar panels right now, but if I did have my solar panels hooked up, these would be the leads uh, that I would run in, the positive and negative. And the solar panels that I'm using are uh, rich solar panels, and they are 200 watt, 12 volt solar panels. And they are the uh, monocrystalline style, so they're not the polycrystalline. So they are the uh, little more efficient uh, solar panels that you can choose. And uh, the system with five kilowatt hours, I'm going to have five solar panels to go with that. So that'll be a thousand watts worth of solar power uh, charging this system. And so we bring the power in. We run this through a breaker box for the uh, photo voltaic cells and uh, this breaker box can handle from 12 volts up to 400 volts and it's got a 40 amp max. From there we run through 6 gauge wire into our solar charger and so this solar charger is an Epivir, I think I'm pronouncing that right. And so this is a an MPPT solar charger and this will handle uh, 40 amps or up to 150 volts input of solar power and then this can be configured for 12 volts or 24 volts and so the system I've got right here is a 24 volt system and uh, usually set that up as uh, 24 volt just to be uh, more efficient and to keep the amperage down on in your wires and things like that um, from the solar charger we come out to our batteries uh, we run six gauge wire into our uh, junction box here well, for the negative we come out positive through a 50 amp circuit breaker DC circuit breaker into our junction box and then from there we come out to our battery bank uh, with a positive with a 200 amp uh, fuse running that through and I set this up with 4 watt wire uh, I think I could have got by with a little bit smaller wire, and I'll go over that here in just a second. Um, but then we feed that into our batteries to charge our battery banks up. And then coming out of our junction box right here, we run number or number two wire into our inverter. And so this is a... Uh... Earlier, I had mentioned that I thought I could get away with some smaller wire size uh, connecting the batteries, the two battery banks together. And I want to explain that here just a little bit. So if we were to look at the uh, manual that was provided by the inverter manufacturer, they've got a table uh, in the manual that shows the recommended wire size gauges. And so if you look down at the bottom here, uh, if we assume that we're going to design to the maximum current that this inverter could draw, which be the would be the 4,000 surge wattage if we look at 4000 watts they show a max current of 200 amps 
but they show a wire size of 3 AWG. And 3 AWG will not carry 200 watts of power. There's no way. So if we were to go over and look at an actual wire size calculator, so I so there's a at southwire.com they've got a wire size calculator and I put in uh, residential wire meters single phase and uh, a one meter length 24 volts and we calculate that wire size it recommends two aught wire so two aught wire depending on the temperature uh, can handle between a 150 and 175 amps and so uh, if we do the calculation for this inverter at 4000 watts at 24 volts that's right around 167 amps. So ideally, two aught wire is what you should be using here. So the manufacturer is showing three gauge wire. And so the only thing I can figure is that they understand something about this inverter and the surge power, maybe the duration of the surge power they don't feel is enough to warrant uh, a larger gauge wire. Um, so if you do notice, they do specify a length of one meter and that's about what we're using is a meter. So anyway, that the manufacturer recommends three aught wire. Um, I went ahead and went with two two AWG, uh, one size larger than the manufacturer recommended, just uh, to be safe. Um, but then I did wire the battery banks with the larger wire to accommodate 200 amps. And so you might say, well, why did I do that? Well. Uh, at the time of putting this together, you know, yeah, this inverter is only going to draw a certain amount of amps, but what if uh, later on I decided I wanted to put another inverter in parallel with this and run something else? Well, uh, I wouldn't want to do that with smaller wires on those battery banks because then you, you could potentially exceed the maximum amount of current. So, but uh, if... I'm only using this one inverter and I know that this is the only device that's going to draw power and I know what the maximum power draw is and according to this manufacturer a 2AWG should be plenty then uh, I really could have saved some money and just put um, two AWG wires connecting the two battery banks and then connecting those to the uh, terminal block or the junction block so anyway I just wanted to explain uh, what I meant when uh, earlier when I was saying that I thought I could get by with uh, some smaller wire. G G and Dell, I think is the way you pronounce that. This is a pure sine wave inverter. It's again 24 volt. Uh, this is capable of 2000 watts continuous and up to 4000 watts surge power. And so with this we would just run extension cords out you know in a case of an emergency or whatever we needed to our uh, deep freeze to our refrigerator and things of that nature. And then also out of the uh, junction box, we run to a battery monitor. And this is a Juan Vaughn battery monitor. And so this is capable of monitoring between zero volts and 120 volts. And it's capable of handling, handling 400 amps. Okay. And so there you have it. That's the system, pretty straightforward. I do want to disclose that I built this uh, off of a design that Will Powers, who runs the uh, DIY Solar Power uh, YouTube channel, this was a design that he put together. And I think this is put together originally for uh, like RV applications. But again, I just kind of retrofitted it to be a, a reserve power battery backup system. So, the uh, system works pretty well. Uh, as far as cost goes, um, I'll post a link with all of the costs, but in general, this whole entire setup costs right around $2,900. And so you might say, well, why would you spend that much money on a system like this? Well, you gotta keep in mind, I didn't design this to be any type of system that was gonna pay me money back. This is really a system that's gonna be a source of power in case of an extended power outage. So uh, our house is 100% electric. Um, when I grew up, we had a wood burning stove so heating a house wasn't a big deal. We could boil water or things of that nature. But in a house that's all electric, you really are at the mercy of the power company. So uh, I really felt like we needed a source of reserve power in the event that we did lose power for 
a week or two at a time. So uh, I haven't seen anything like that happen since I was a kid. I do remember a few power outages when I was younger that would last longer than a week, but um, so far we haven't had anything like that. But just to be prepared, uh, now we do have, with a system like this, a source of renewable energy that we can charge these batteries back up on a daily basis and have power regardless of how long a uh, power outage might last. So anyway, uh, that is the system that I built and I uh, hope you find it beneficial. Again, educational and entertainment purposes only. Uh, if you don't know how to work with electricity, hire a professional. Um, I am not a professional, so don't take my word on any of this. Do your own research, hire somebody to do the research for you, whatever. Uh, but anyway, if you found any of this helpful, again, help me out, subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, I'd like to see or hear of any comments that anybody thinks of this thing. So, anyway, uh, that is it. Okay, until the next one.